Welcome back. Many thanks for staying with us on the program. If you're just joining us, this is Super John on Super Screen Television. Um, as you already know, today is June 12th. We're celebrating not just Nigeria's um, 20 years of unbroken democracy. We're also looking at some of the legacies left behind by the man who many people say is at the heart of the struggle for democracy in this country, um, M.K. Abiola. You remember that in 1993, um, in that June 12th election, Abiola had polled a total of 8,341,309 votes to win to far who got um, 5,952,087 votes um, from uh, the professor Humphrey wants to lead National Electoral Commission. And you know, um, it, it was the first time Nigerians saw, or Nigerians voted for a Muslim Muslim ticket without complaining because uh, the person who was Abiola's running mate was Baba Ghana Kindube, who was you know, also a Muslim. So it, it, a lot of people said that election was not just significant in terms of unity in Nigeria, but also how you know, it was a free, uh, one of the freest and fairest elections we've ever had in this country. And today we're focusing on Nigeria's 20 years of democracy, um, remembering Abiola's uh, legacies, rather. And to help us have this conversation, we have two legal practitioners, um, faces that you are well familiar with. We have Samson Adewoyega Newton, uh, Newton, as well as Tunde Kolawole. Many thanks to the both of you for coming on the program. Thanks for having us. Thank you very much. Good morning. Um, today is June 12. I mean, we, we, we can keep repeating that, repeating mm. that. And uh, before now, it, it was just a day, you know, June 12, which people come and talk about the struggles. It wasn't a public holiday. It wasn't recognized by the federal government. Um, it was just in the southwest that, you know, it was a public holiday. Some other parts of the country didn't care about it. Um, tell us about the significance of June 12. You know, what you think is the significance of this day? Mm. Well, I think uh, so much. Uh, uh, June 12 is... Um, significant for so many reasons. Um, one, um, it's a day in which we could say that Nigeria, Nigerians um, emphatically said uh, no to military law, no to military dictatorship. It's a day in which the Nigerian people said, look, we want to join the rest of civilized world in practicing democracy and not just a few allies uh, using um, guns and tanks purchase with the taxpayers' money to impose themselves on the people and begin to rule them uh, under whims and caprices. So that's uh, one area of it. June 12 is also significant because um, it has now become an occasion to remember some of our heroes who made um, the June 12 possible. Loads of people shout June 12, June 12, and all that, without remembering that uh, besides them, Kwe Abiola, there were all manners of people who made it possible. Mm. People in the labor movement, people in the academic exactly. community, yes. people who were student leaders, market women, and even the ordinary man on the street. On one particular day during the struggle for June 12, um, uh, uh, revalidation, I can recollect in one particular day, about 188 people were killed all over the country, particularly on the Kurudu Road that spans all that passes through your office here. We have to pick so many dead bodies to the mortuary, to the different hospitals. Uh, countless others were maimed in the process of that uh, particular struggle. So when, why we do remember M. Abiola and Nora, we must also remember these unsung heroes of June 12 who laid down their lives to make sure that we have uh, what we now call June 12 or democracy day as it were. Uh, you also mentioned something that is very, very significant. And it is the fact that the Nigerian people voted for a Muslim, uh, Muslim ticket mm. in the person of M. Kwe Abiola and then Baba Gana Kingero. What that tells us is that uh, before that time, Nigerian people were not divided along religious and ethnic lines mm. as we do have them today. In fact, nobody remembered that M. Kwe Abiola and Baba Gana Kingero were both Muslims. They just wanted capable and competent house to lead them as president and vice president. And when these two gentlemen stepped forward and then they were nominated and presented by the parties and all that, the whole Nigerian people returned and they went to the polling booth and voted for them massively. Unfortunately, that gain of Nigerian people not remembering or not knowing or turning the blind eye to what whatever your religious positions are has been significantly eroded since 1999 when we returned to this civil rule. And how did this start? A few allies in northern parts of the country started drumming, they started, uh, went, I mean, took us back to the Sharia and Brogolio, 
You remember they have made the remarks of this world and Lord, I will say, look, the northern parts of the country must be ruled by Sharia. And then they went and yet started amending the laws, imposing Sharia uh, laws on the people in certain parts of the country, and then also forming an Islamic uh, uh, police to enforce the Sharia. They started uh, amputating people's hands and, 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 and uh, stoning people to death for committing adultery and all manners of uh, uh, so called crimes and all that. It is the consequences of those actions that we are now having in Boko Haram now and all the respective bandits that we have all over the places. If those people have not taken us back to the so-called dark ages, the ages that the Nigerian people have wanted mm. for God forever, but, but, but they, the they will not be having the kind of religious well, they, they that we have is, in our hands um, now. It's part of their religion. If, if it's part of their religion, they will have to at least respect that. Every, every religion has its tenets and its dictates. Absolutely, so, and that's absolutely. one thing that you can't you can take away. If Sharia law is part of their religion, then we, at least we have to respect it. Yeah, um, it is not true. Um, I, 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 not I would, true. I, I will come back, we'll come back, All come right. back to, those, mm. to those issues. But All I want right. to ask mm. you what you also think, because again, um, it was, that election was announced, I think about 12, 12 days later, yes. you know, after, after it, it, it was conducted. I want to ask in your own opinion, what you think that did to um, Nigeria? Did it set us back in some way, or did you think that, look, we learned from, from that? Thank you very much. Uh, I believe that the, the annulment of the election actually broke the trust that the trust Nigerians had in the Nigerian government. Mm. Because that was like, like uh, my learned colleague said, that was like the first time Nigerians came out in mass to, to vote and they, were, they stood by their candidates because literally it was the option A4, you mm -hmm. stand. So they stood by their candidates and they were counted. And this was what they wanted. This was what Nigerians wanted. But for the government of the day, that is the person of Ibrahim Babangida, to annul that election for no reason. Because till today, he has always said that if he says what he knows about the duty of the, the, the country will go in flames. He has never come out to say the reasons why he annulled the election. Um, he, uh, the reason he gave at the time was that he didn't want uh, a situation where the judiciary um, would be, would be uh, the created judiciary that can be influenced, to influenced with uh, money or something. I think that, that was something he, the reason he gave at the time. Uh, uh, that's, uh, look at how this, uh, that reason sounds. It doesn't make any sense. It makes no sense, no, co no iota of sense. See, the truth of the matter is that the, the announcement of the June 12 election sent Nigeria back to the Dark Ages. Because if Nigeria had actually continued on that pedestal, we would have had an improved electoral system by now. We would have had such developments in our ways of electioneering. Because for the first time, Nigerians actually agreed that it was the freest and first election. There was no election uh, election parties. There were there were no hoodlums hijacking ballot boxes. Uh, even for people are even still agitating that Nigerians should go back to that system that was practiced. So the failure of the of, of the government to actually recognize that broke the hearts of Nigeria. And from then Nigerians did not put total trust in their government anymore. That's why when there's an election come up, people will say that oh, they know who they will put. It is as a result of what happened in 1993. Because they believe that the government imposes or selects who they want to lead. And when I mean the government, I mean the people that are original governments, mm -hmm. not the elected officials that we have. Because we all know that Nigeria is governed by some set of cabals. And that is the truth. So it is whoever, whoever they want to impose that gets to rule. And that is the average notion of an average Nigerian out there on the streets. So the nineteen ninety three election that was that was announced sent us into uh, into the days of dark oblivion. And it was a mistake that Nigeria is still suffering from to today. Okay. Oh, let's open the phone lines now. I want to let our viewers know that our phone lines are open. You can call in to make your contribution. Um, you can use the numbers displayed on your screen. 
please, when you're calling, tone down the volume of your TV set. I would like to have a smooth conversation with you, so we want to hear you clearly. Tone down the volume of your TV set. And also, um, you should also be very careful with the kind of language you use. Uh, no matter how touchy this topic is for your emotional, you are about this topic, you can use abusive words, and you can also cast a passion on anybody. Let's have a very civil um, com conversation. I'm coming back to you. Mm. Please let me lend my mm. voice to the reason uh, you, you asked the question why the, the elections were cancelled. Mm. Uh, let's be honest with ourselves and let's tell the Nigerian people uh, a few things that we mm. knew about the cancellation of that election. Basically, two things were responsible. Even before MK Wabiola contested the election, a few people who had access to Ibrahim Babangida who were close to him as military head of state. Ibrahim Babangida had never eaten it from them that he knew that with the kind of philanthropy, with the kind of programs and activities that Abiola was carrying out all over the country, that Abiola has the intention of becoming Nigeria's president. But that he will not allow him to Abiola become president. Abiola will become president over his dead body. Okay, sorry, I just, I just... For them all, um, just let me Just let me, let me butt in, just yeah. let me butt in there. Right. I, um, I want to give exactly the, the reason he all gave. Right. Um, he said, you know, um, he gave an excuse that his step was taken um, that's Babangida. He said that the election was a no to save, in quotes now, um, to save our judiciary from being ridiculed and politicized locally and internationally. End of quote. I just wanted to say yeah. what he said exactly. It, 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 it doesn't make sense. Exactly. It makes, it makes no, no sense. It doesn't make no sense. He was just envious of MK Abiola. In fact, he told a few people, and what were sent to Abiola, that look, this man say with the kind of stupendous way that you are sitting on, that it will be too dangerous again to allow you to combine that with the presidency of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And he will not let it be. That rather than allow you to become president, he would rather die. And people told them Kabiola these things. A few of them, uh, some cleric and some even his first wife. Because what were sent to his first wife and some other person, and now look, this man has said that he will not allow Kabiola to become president. And that if Kabiola is not be careful, is not, is not careful he will also cripple his financial empire, he will cripple his businesses. That was all. The second one was that IBB wanted to rule for life, just like Abacha. He didn't want to go. That was how you find that he started shifting the goalposts. He will say 1993, in 1994, that's the result of the democracy. He kept on shifting the, the, the post. It was when the pressure became very unbearable for him and all that, that he agreed to even conduct that 12th election, 1993. So all this is alibi, all this is frivolous excuses and all that. But that doesn't make sense to any rational woman then. How has the judiciary, in what way is the judiciary going to, 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 to be an abattoir to one Kira Bella becoming the president of the federal government of Nigeria? Rather, the, our judiciary have also shown immense um, uh, capacity to really adjudicate between two uh, uh, parties or between two political, between two disputants and other, with respect to their claims and, 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 and But do, do you agree yeah. with, do you agree mm. with Newton when he said yeah. that, um, that the annulment of that election has mm. created a setback in our electoral process? Oh, definitely. They, like he said, the trust between the people and the electorate and the government became broken. Right from that very day. day. And the kind of abuses that we begin to see mm. In the electoral processes it today, it wasn't there before. There's no, there's no. It was immediately after June 12, people started importing all these thuggery and all these banditry, scratching of ballot boxes, killing of political opponents in order to, 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 to be able to get to some of these posts. Hey, it began to rear their ugly heads. If we had maintained that capacity, if we had maintained that uh, a momentum of June 12 and all that, we would have had, so we would have had uh, a, be a better, a better, a better political, a better environment. political government for, you know, of now. For, for Okay, let me also ask you in terms of elections. Mm. Um, I, in, for that election, you know, according to the fact that the st statistics I read out earlier, mm. um, Abela polled over uh, you know eight million to defeat so far, who you know polled five million. Um, the fact that Abiola is a southern Muslim from you know Abiokuta of the state and was able to secure a national mandate freely, you know, um, from across Nigeria, and then you know he also had uh, uh, Baba Gana who was also a northern Muslim, mm. sorry, was also yeah, a Muslim, and so they were running on a Muslim-Muslim ticket. Um, doesn't that show us that, look, um, Nigeria, Nigerians, you know, Nigeria is more united than we give ourselves credit for, and that Nigerians don't care for, you know, who is there as long as all they just want is good governance? Well, uh, thank you very much. Well, I would say that as of that time, Nigerians were looking for competence. They were looking for someone that, that eschewed that competence. Like, 
okay, I can take you from this level to a better level. I can actually make things better for us because from the from the from the from the manifesto of of, of IBB and, and his running mate, you could see that they had clear cut uh, direction. Abiola. Abiola, no, sorry, Abiola, sorry, Abiola, yeah. and and his running mate uh, MQ, they had a clear cut direction as to where they were going to. So much so that it was even it was even going at, as far as saying that it will make sure that uh, that the United States of America and the European Union actually pay a repatriation Empire fund mm -hmm. for for slavery. Uh, I think one of those one of, I think one of, one of the problems he had was that statement he made. In my own personal opinion, but but Nigerians could see that he had successfully built an empire from nowhere, and he had been able to even in the midst of so many upheavals he has been able to create something out of nothing so nigerians could willingly give their trust to someone like that because they feel that he had the competence he had the technical know-how to bring nigerian from where they were into something better now after that it became a, a, a point of of a mandate for the elitists the political elites to create that division in nigeria see i always say that the division that we have in this country is based on people's selfish interests nothing more nothing else because the more divided we are as a nation the more they can continue to foster themselves and their courts in it but if nigeria should come together and really bind irrespective of their tribes their languages where they are from and actually come together we would have for long changed the face of this country but they don't want that for, for a Christian, the, 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 one of the very funny things about the Bible is that when men came together to build a tower to reach the heavens, God said that if their voices are together, if their, if their thoughts are together, they can achieve anything. Mm -hmm. So let us create language to confuse them. Okay, so I, 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 exactly, I want to pick it, pick it from where, and I'm coming back to you again, Aditya. Do you think that, you know, the enormity of that election, apart from also t uh, tampering with the electoral process, like you, uh, you know, you alluded to earlier, do you also think that it also had something to do with um, the divisive message that we now hear today um, from most politicians, or you just think you look, it, 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 that's another matter on, the, on its own? The, 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 the divisive message we, we, we are having today is not too, is not, uh, is not too unique. Prior to June 12th, 1993, Nigeria has, have always had that, that it, was, it, not, it was not this large, the, the bricks were not this big, this apparent, but it has always been there. Even right from the days of the clamor for independence, from the, the north, the southwest, if that's why you can see that the, you had the AG, the action group from the southwest, we had the NCC, uh, NC, NCNC. NCNC, majorly from the north, the, the divisions were there, but even in the divisions, there were still, there was still a unifying force, the, the love for a greater Nigeria. But now, apparently, the, the June 12th was supposed to cement the nation. June 12th, 1993 was supposed to bring the nations together, because Nigerians actually came out en masse, irrespective of their tribes and their religion, and they came to vote for who they thought was competent. So if we had continued from that, and I, I think that the unifying force would have been more, would have been more united. But now because that did not happen, Nigerians have gone back to their regional forces because they felt that, okay, if we had come together and it did not work, let us go back and protect our own territory. Mm. And that is what we are having right now. I still say that if we had continued from the pedestal that we had in 1993, the nation will have been in a better place okay. now. Um, I want to remind our viewers that the phone lines are open. You can call in um, using the numbers displayed on your screen. You can also use our social media handles across Facebook, Twitter. Um, you can, if you're watching live on YouTube, you can leave a comment, comment there to be, to be um, taken here on the program. And you can also go to Insta our Instagram page to leave your comment there. Um, but if you want to talk in, if you want to call in, then use the numbers displayed on your screen and turn down the volume of your TV set when you call in. I, I'm coming to you now, uh, mm. um, Barry Tunde. Yeah. He's, he also talks about the fact that um, if what had that 
you know, election, that election mm -hmm. was upheld. Um, it's having a ticket of, you know, someone from the south and someone from the north, even though that's what we have today, but if I allow that to happen then, that this um, divisive rhetoric that we hear sometimes, that, you know, we wouldn't probably have as, as much as that, that, that in, probably the election would have united us more. Do you agree, agree with that? I, I do, I do. I agree with him also that um, Nigerian, in Nigeria, there has always been these cleavages. Uh, but the kind of cleavages that we had in the past, before the June uh, 1993 election, was uh, basically a long tribal line. You and I will recollect that immediately Chief of Afeni Aulo formed Egbe Omo Dujua, which later on transformed to the Action Group and Nora. Mm. And then with the crisis that happened in the western part of the country in which Dr. Namrazikwe was hosted from the west, you know. Before that time, Dr. Namrazikwe used to win uh, most of the elections in the western part of the country. He mm. was basically the base in Lagos there. So immediately Aulo and Ko came in with the Egbe Omo Dujua and later the Action Group and then Namdazikwe was hosted from the west and all that. And he had to go back to the, to the, to east. the east. Uh, the ethnic uh, rivalry yeah, uh, sta uh, came, started and then uh, the, the, the blows went from there. began to be polarized um, uh, somehow. In places like the northern part of the country, which even seem to have more tribal something than the southern part of the country and all that, you, the, the ethnic divide wasn't that really uh, uh, deep. You parents. find out the Islamic religion and then the, 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 the kind of open-mindedness that most northern leaders had kind of bring about uh, some kind of unity in those places. Once you are Ariwa, once you are from the north, you are just seen as Ariwa. Nobody knew whether you were Nope, you were TV, or you were Baruba, or you were Hausa, or you were Fulani and all that. So, but immediately all these divisive tendencies came in from the west and all that. The divide started happening. So, but the divide was not along religious lines. It was along tribal lines mm -hmm. and all that. It was only in this 1983, I mean 1993 election. I mean, after they returned to Sibulu in 1997, uh, the present, the presidential we have having now, which we have uh, tried for about 20 years now, that you find out these younger people who didn't understand the history of this country, and now our forefathers were able to manage some of these centrifugal forces in our midst. They, 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 they introduced all these. Uh, uh, religious uh, issues into the entire system. Not that it wasn't there, it was latent, but we were able to manage it. I will recollect that um, when we were returning to civil in the uh, getting our independence in 1960 and all that, the northern part of the country said they wanted a Sharia system of law, when the south said they wanted a secular system of, uh, of yes. uh, governance and all that. Yes. In order for us to be able to manage that crisis and all that, Split. a consensus, uh, they were able to get a consensus in which the North was allowed to have a kind of um, a penal code, code when the southern part of the country the is using the, 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 the criminal code. The penal code, when you look at it and all that, is a kind of an abridgment mm -hmm. of the Sharia uh, law system, something similar to what they use in Pakistan, uh, uh, for example, and all that. So, but the, the polarity, the, 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 the rigid divide that we now begin to see, in my humble opinion, started becoming more accentuated when we now return to this civil rule in 1999. Whether it could have been better managed, it's obvious we could manage it better. There is no society in the world that is homogeneous in terms of tribe, in terms of religious and other. Every society has always found one way or the other to manage whatever centrifugal force is within their means so that society can move forward. Because I do know the average Igbo man doesn't care uh, who is in there as president or as vice president. The Yoruba ordinary man on the street will not care. The Hausa man who is a beggar on the street or is doing a majiri on the street of Canada and other will not bother. If you have a good leader who is able to provide for them, three square meals in a day, who is able to provide accommodation, provide the uh, good hospitals and schools for their children, they wouldn't be bothered. And that was why you find the situation in 1993 when Abiola came and said, look, we are going to banish poverty. We are going to provide free education. We will make sure that nobody goes to bed without having three square meals in a day. That became a very resonating uh, and, uh, program, uh, which the entire Nigerian people could buy into. So, uh, we must find a way to return those days because the kind of um, insecurity, the kind of uh, poverty 
the kind of joblessness, uh, the high level of unemployment that we find in the society today, in a way, if you look at it critically, can be traced to all these faulty foundations that the uh, modern Nigerian politicians begin to lay for all of us as a people. If we were united in saying, look, we don't care where you come from, if the entire people of the East can give us good leaders in the Senate, in the um, presidency, as vice presidents, as president, and all that, and they're able to run the country well and all that, I am sure nobody is going to care too much. But like he said, the average Nigerian allies uh, stuck in trade today is to really begin to hammer on this ethnic divide, on this religious divide, and that. Because if they don't throw spanner into the wheels, yeah, we'll of from it. they will not benefit from it. The society, the, 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 the kind of uh, undeserved uh, um, things that they begin to get in the society will never be there. Because look at all their life. They are united when you come to one thing. Have you ever seen them quarrel in the National Assembly over the wages and salary and all that they receive? That they receive, they whether are, they, 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 they are always unified. unified. They are unified. They are always very unified. Look at uh, <laughs> what happened not too long ago. Almost all the governors in the country today have taken to the National Assembly a law which says that uh, once you have been governor, once you have been Senate president, once you have been this and that, the house is going to be built for you in uh, the state capital of the state that you rule and one in Abuja, and you're going to be getting four brand new vehicles on a, a two, two year basis. Uh, you will get your salary for life. Uh, your severe package is going to be 300% of what we're earning as, as, as a governor. All of them, whether they be in the north, whether they be in the east, or whether in the south, all of them have such laws now. So what that tells us is that our allies are united when they come to their selfish interest, to what they get from the system. But they keep the average Nigerian person divided so that they will not unite to begin to challenge them for this unmerited thing that they get from the system. Okay. So these are the problems. I, I want to come to you, um, to Newton. You, there's, um, still talking about Abiola's Abiola struggle. We know that the president has named him, you know, uh, the Grand Commander of the Federal Republic, and then also named June to have Democracy Day. So people, some people have celebrated, celebrated that, or when he did that, saying, um, look, this is the right step in the right direction. But there are some people who, you know, for them, they said it's not satisfactory until Abiola is named um, a, post, a president, you know, posthumously. But uh, um, we have a chieftain of the PDP who has come out, but it just is say, um, saying the president shouldn't declare um, Abiola uh, a, a posthumous president, saying that that would lead to a constitutional crisis. And I want to get your opinion on that. Well, uh, thank you very much. Constitutional crisis. Uh, uh, I actually wonder how that would create uh, <laughs> a, a constitutional crisis. But well, Joe is not a lawyer. Because <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to, I'm, with all due respect to, to, to uh, um, Okay, this is a statement he made. He said the president doesn't have the right to do that. That only INEC has the right to do that, and that should be coming from INEC. Okay, we have a call from Philip. Philip calling from Bagada. Good morning, Philip. Welcome to Super Don. Philip is uh, Philip calling from Bagada. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Okay, uh, to my conclusion. I want to uh, talk about uh, NJ. You see, in uh, June 12th, I remember uh, after the election, there was the odds that people were running and running as a hospital. So, but um, I have to uh, put this thing in together because. The man, is it the most that took something of the field before he becomes a legend in Nigeria? He has not decided. If Abiola was to be alive today, I am pretty sure that this country would not be the way it is. This is a man who was great, and he had his own, he, he had his own resources. But still, he was selfless enough. So I really appreciate the, uh, the, the program that you people are doing. And I, I just want to say that uh, June 12th, uh, the Senate and the President was is really right to have moved the day away from May 29. Now, uh, putting it on the uh, 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 June 12th. And if we will know that the man is not dying this is the man that, you know, uh, he, he, he has done so much, even for the poor, the poor will not be the man that uh, he did so much for the country. That is my contribution. Uh, All right. Thank you very much, Thank you. Thank you very much for calling in, Philip. Um, that was Philip Collins from Bagada, and he said, you know, the president was right to have.
put the, uh, the, day, the Democracy Day on June 12th. Thanks for your contribution. Um, but just before um, Philip called in, I was asking you a question, and now Buddy just said the reason he says it's going to be a constitutional crisis because the president doesn't have the right to declare um, Abiola the president posthumously, that that should come from INEC, that only INEC, the, you know, who conducted that election, uh, at, the, at that time it was NEC. It was um, NEC. You know, no, 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 and now, um, the should we have about the it. right to mm. go back in time and say, look, you won that election, and we're declaring you president. Well, that, that, that would be a very interesting, it would be a very interesting, uh, legal, because that's that's going to be for the courts really uh, mm. expound upon. But I, I believe that I will. I, from my personal opinion, I believe that the the president has uh, has uh, constitutional powers to have executive orders to 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 pass uh, executive orders, which are as effective as being laws. Now, the the fact that. Uh, Neck conducted an election, and a winner was declared. Even that the fact that the, the no certificate was of return was given to him, but there was a declaration mm. as to who, who won the election. Uh, that is why I doubt that uh, M. Cabrera actually won the 1993 election. So if the president should decide to recognize him. Now this is the word because he is dead, and there is no benefit of the presidency that's going to accrue to him, apart from what has been given to him now, which is the grand commander. Because that alone itself, because the only people that can actually have that title are presidents of the country. So in a way, without creating a constitutional crisis, as Bolivia has said, Brian has actually done that. The only thing he has not done is that he has said, okay, it should be put into the uh, all of fame of past presidents. But the title that has been given to him is the highest that can be given and only to those that are presidents. So diplomatically, the president has actually done what uh, All right, what has uh, been clamored for. Let me put you on hold again. We have Johnson calling from the Good morning, Johnson. Good morning. Hello, good morning. Welcome to Super John. Um, I am enjoying the program people are doing this now. Thank you very um, much. What I want to contribute to this program is most times it is easy for people to want to prove things that concern money. These people will have discovered that this election was free and fair. Why can't they go back and call all the major active players, people that participated in making sure that this man was not given his right. Why can't they people be prosecuted? What is our legal system doing? Eh? Why can't they be between 1993 into just coming to declare public on the day and to celebrate what we don't understand? Why can't they call back this day? Call those people that participated and prosecute them. Don't you have a legal system? Was it not functional in 1993? What are they doing? They are making the youth of this country disappointed. I'm not really happy. Thank you very much. All right, thank you very much for calling in, Johnson. Mm. Um, he, he, he made a point that we're going to go back to go later. Back to yes, I like the point yeah. he made. He's talking about going back and then, you know, prosecuting those, you know, who, who were exactly. who were involved exactly. in, in that. Exactly. And we're going to go look at that later mm. and what, what that right. means for this country. But, you Please, know, can I interview on this issue of uh, mm, the, 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 the yes. president? Yes. No, right. It is not going to be any constitutional crisis. All that the president needs to do is to send the bill to the National Assembly and say, look, or take the first step of calling on my next thing because the results are already in the archive. You gather the results and all that. Send the bill to the National Assembly. Say, look, we want to deannul this election. And then the National Assembly will work out, I mean, uh, uh, pass the bill into law. And once it is passed into law and all that, a proclamation, the result is going to be announced. And the man is going to be made the president. Posthumously. All you need to do is that uh, you put his name in the list of. Uh, a young former president, so that his uh, family begin to receive some of the benefits that um, accrues uh, to the office of, of the president. You see, until we have done that, this impunity that we saw in the anomaly right election is never going to, the ghost of that impunity is never going to be laid to rest. Mm. That one individual out of envy will stand up and say the elections or the results that, uh, the election results that millions of Nigerians cast, and which everybody already knew, 
you are going to the anointing. I mean, you are going to anoint it. We must lay that goes to rest by actually declaring Abiola as a president. So you think that it makes a lot of difference if, if he's declared of course, to president? It will, it will. It will uh, permanently, like I said, lay to rest. The goes I mean, the impunity that attended to that anointment of that election. It is also sending the appropriate signal to who will be eventually in the military and end of the security forces and all that. But if perchance in future some people try to do that kind of silly thing mm -hmm. that was done in that 1993 elections and all that, this country is never going to accept that. And that will forever be I mean, to be revisited at the appropriate time so that we don't continue to carry that and pass us around our necks. Furthermore, why we do that to MK Abiola? I will also want to suggest that there's going to be the need eh, for the federal government to elect in Abuja a kind of senator in which all those men and women, all those young people, who lay down their lives to make sure that the June 12th election is, and uh, the cancellation of that election is their law, are recognized. When you build a cenotaph in the memory of these people, you inscribe their names in there. And each time we are celebrating June 12th and all that, that particular spot where the cenotaph is being becomes a rallying point for the Nigerian people. All right, I have to put you a hold. Uh, and Mustafa, we have Mustafa yeah. calling from Yaba. Good morning, Mustafa. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Super John. Thank you, my my, my teacher. I want to ask that. Uh, I want to ask a question. Go ahead. And my question is: If you are as a president, what will happen to the one who is ready to give it? Um, we didn't get that question, Mustafa. Can you take it again? I said, if Abdullah was made to the president, who fell on the first line, what will happen to his advice? Okay, um, I want to believe I, I got your question. You said if Abiola um, is the president, is it his wife? What would happen to his wife? I think that's what we are, we are fighting for him to be needed for a president and put in the Hall of Fame. And he was there with somebody and he must be saved before he was saved. All right, um, Mustafa, I w can you do us a favor? Mm -hmm. um, can you send a text message? I really want us to take your question. I think it's quite important. That's why you called in. Um, but it did, uh, there's something wrong with the line. It might be a network problem. We can hear you clearly. Um, if you can send us a text message of that question right away so that we can take it before the program ends. I um, would like to have your, text, uh, your question, please. Send it as a text message and then you know our guests will address it. Um, we were talking mm. about uh, yes. so apart from those young men who are I mean, we need to also immortalize those young men and women mm. who are doing street battles with uh, the security forces to make sure that we have uh, a June 12th uh, election. They are also heroes in my own bull opinion. You also recollect that people like uh, Alfred Rewane yes. were killed in the in, in their own city room there mm. simply because uh, he became a rallying point. For this June 12th struggle, it was in his house, you know, to do a Christian thing there. That some of the meetings for by the activists uh, who were uh, championing this June 12th election were, 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 were being here. Uh, you also will remember some journalists uh, like uh, Bagata Kalto and the rest of them who, who were killed uh, because of the reform they were, um, they were given. writing uh, on the June 12th. And so many other right. people. Um, we cannot, uh, quantum, let's quickly um, touch on prosecution yeah. because right. again, let's not forget that this is also Nigeria's um, 20 years of unbroken democracy. Exactly. Before we could quickly look at that, mm -hmm. I want to, um, um, it was, uh, I think, was it Philip who called earlier, who, I, I'm getting the caller right, who asked the question of prosecution and saying, um, why haven't we, he mentioned not really a question, he exactly. made a comment on prosecution mm -hmm. where he said, um, why haven't we gone back in time to prosecute those who were involved in this? Um, but it looks like we, we do we have that kind of culture where even for in co issues of corruption people have said let's go back in time to look at um, the power sector to look at you know a lot of issues in this country and that has never happened do you think that that is going to happen or is that the right step you know to uh, well it is, it is the right step but it won't happen now mm. and the very reason why it won't happen now because the principal player is still alive see nigerians we need to be very factual uh the the whole political elites they are all in bed with each other mm. so there is there is a there is a there's an unspoken there's an unspoken agreement mm. that see as long as you're there i would not bother you see 
I'll give an example. Now, if uh, Bayo was going to speak, he'll say that he blames the past administration. Mm. He blames the past administration that so much money was taken. But he had never for he has gone after every other person. He went after the wife, he went after the chief of staff, but, the, but he would not go after Jonathan because they all have an agreement. They will never go after IBB because he's very much alive, he's very much in power, they still need him. Whenever they want to run for their election, they will still go back and meet him. He is a political godfather in this country. And in as much as he's still very relevant, they will not want to offend the sacred cow. So we're saying that some people in this country are untouchable and above the law. <laughs> that is not that is not, that is not it's not even not a question because we know that is the truth. In Nigeria, there are people that are above the law. And we have come to take that as a culture in this country. See, when the Germans were in power, the German Nazi, immediately after the war when they went the, the, the Europeans went back in time and made sure that every single person that was involved in the atrocities in the, in the, in the, in the Holocaust, Holocaust mm. were brought to question, were brought to book. No matter how long it took them, they were found and they, were, they, they, they made sure that they, the, the victims, got justice. Mm. See, if we understand that, that you can run for so long, but you cannot hide, or you can hide, but we will still get you. Maybe Nigerians and Nigeria will be a better place. We had the Oputa panel, we had so many things. The question is, what was the result of the Oputa panel? There were so many things that were, that were reviewed, and that was only because the principal uh, player, Abacha, died. But out of all the revelations that came out, how many how many things were put in place? How many, how many of them were put in, 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 in structure? So we need to understand that in Nigeria, in as much as some people are, 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 are protected, are, are guarded, then there's no going back to June 12th. We will just continue victims to... Victims and, and the, the fallen heroes as it were. Even we those who are alive... To, we will continue to, not, even, this one that, even this one that was done today, mm. uh, I'm, I'm, very, I'm very, very certain that uh, uh, Boria has created more enemies some for himself. Are not happy about They're not happy about this one that we are doing, yeah. that they, they moved uh, the, the Democracy Day from May 23rd to June 12th because it is a validation of, and it keeps reminding them of what they've done. So they are not happy with it. So many people fought it. So many people really fought it, and they didn't want it to come into play. But it did. So. Uh, let me add. Uh, that, um, uh, while you're okay. adding to that, okay. um, also look at the, uh, the fact that. Um, it's 20 years of Nigeria's yes. democracy. And then wh while you're speaking on that, how far have we come? Do okay. you think that, you know, um, democracy has yielded any, any, any sort, sort of dividends for Nigerians in 20 foremost, years? First uh, what I want to add is that, uh, look, it is still possible to bring these people to book. Just like he said, remember the First World War, the Second World War, and then the Holocaust, the killing of the Jews and what have they? Do you know up to today? If you are identified and recognized yeah. and that you are still alive and, and you, you participated in that technology and all that, you are still going to be picked up, tried, and then a uh, yeah, proper punishment dished to you in the court of competent jurisdiction. Uh, at the end, the lucky thing is that um, the time does not run out for um, criminal cases. There's no status of limitation. Once you have committed an offense, if you are pending 100 years later and you are still alive and all that, you're you still can still be left high life for committing such a uh, crime. The difference here is that uh, the political will is never there. To do Just it. like he said, the allies have a kind of an honority code not to rob each other's feather when they come to things like that. They are You know, look at uh, the, 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 the indices. Up to now, the president is still saying Abacha is a saint. Oh, definitely. Even when uh, time uh, uh, Obviously, we are, we are seeing, <laughs> you know, seeing returns of, of his loot. Some of the loot that Abacha stole from time ago. Streets and monuments are still named after Abacha. Yes. And what is the reason? When Buhari was down, when Buhari was hungry, Abacha made him the chairman of Petroleum Trust Fund and all that, in which he put billions of naira under Buhari to do as he wished, to spend as he liked. He rehabilitated him. So, it's payback time now. It will be difficult for Mr. President to summon the political will and call it. 
to say he's going to start prosecuting the Apacha, I mean Apacha, posthumously for the atrocity that he committed, or to even begin to say, look, some of the monuments that were named after Apacha, we, 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 we are residing there, we, we are receiving them, or taking them off. Them all those things it, it, it will be difficult to do. Even going fully after Apacha now, the president doesn't have the, the, the will as such. What you find out that most of the Apache loot that we are recovering and all that, it is the funny country that are helping us to recover those loot and then return it to us. Mm. So right. these are challenges. But you see, like we said again, the ghost of June 12 is never going to be laid to rest until we actually go after these people. All right. Prosecute them appropriately. Because but of our time, uh, by we have some setback in that area. Look at the trail of our Mustafa. Mm -hmm. Look, Professor Fala Wale, I, I would really like us to look okay. at that because of our time. You were saying that you're someone talking about, um, honestly speaking, I'm not impressed with the way we are born, with the way we are. If you look at the billion of Naira and dollar that we have sunk into this democracy in mm. the last uh, 20 years mm. and they are about, mm. the result that we have on ground of three just five does it measure up to the money that we have spent? No! Like look at like 20 years investment. after after democracy and all that. People can still go after I make officials and put guns on their head and say, declare me as the winner of this senatorial uh, seat or declare me as the governor. As a governor. Or some people will sit down in San Paras State and say, look, except it is me, we are not going to allow this political party to conduct uh, fair and free primaries. So, the Nigerian airline seems not to have learned any nothing. In fact, if not for the vigilance, if not for the resolve of the average Nigerian person, we have had enough temptation for the military to even interfere in the attack to of come the back country. Again. That is, that is but the Nigerian people will not accept it. And military rule has also become very, very unpopular, very, very uh, around the world. It is no longer the end thing. So, but we must seize this opportunity or this occasion of uh, June 12th to remind the Nigerian politicians and all that. that certain people lay down their lives for us to be able to get to where we are today. today. And that they should stop rocking the boat. They should stop managing the affairs of the country. The legislators should consider their efforts on just making law oversight functions and all that. And passing uh, 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 representing their different constituencies. I am not impressed, honestly speaking. So we must let people know this. All right. Um, let's also get uh, your, your take. Um, do you think that we've done so well in the past 20 years? Or you know, averagely, what, what's your rating for you know Nigeria's democracy in the past twenty years? Well, uh, Nigeria's democracy past twenty years, I would say that well, uh, we have not done too well. We have not even done well. Like uh, like my very like like you said, we the the expectations of the people have not been met in any way, because for those that have fought. They had an expectation. They were. They had this picture in their mind that they had painted, and I do not think that that picture has been met. But I will still say that uh, well, what we are operating right now is a quasi democracy. In in a, in a sense, it's not it's not a full fledged democracy. It's more quasi because uh, we still have cases of extrajudicial killings. We have cases of 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 the government sending DSS to go. And after, go after media, after people that have a diverting opinion. The, the SARS harassing young and, people. Yes. Killing young people. The SARS out there killing young men, young Nigerians. These are still because I, I want to I want to wonder why in a in a, in a democratic system we we cannot have a voice or a, diver, uh, a, a divergent opinion. So, but it is still better than what we had in the military regime because. Now we are discussing this. If we're in a military regime, I'm not sure we'll have this avenue to discuss this. They will so, shut so, down this place. Freedom of speech is some sort of reward. <laughs> yeah. Freedom of speech, oh, sure. is, is, it is a reward because uh, we, I'm very sure that we would have the tweets on social media where. All right, go ahead, Samuel from Fadi. Hello, Samuel. Right, Samuel, please call us back. That sound that you sounded like a very young person. Seems to be nice to um, get the view of a very young person concerning June 12th. I um, would <laughs> like to hear from you again. 
as to what you think of today. Um, you were saying before um, he called. So basically, the, the, the freedom of, of, of expression, the freedom of, of speech, the fact that you can you can express yourself on social media. Like like for me personally, I've had cause to to write against uh, some some of the policies of of no, Wari no. on, on Twitter. I know that maybe it's not as, as, as damning as one that they will come after me for. But I'm not sure I'll be able to do that if I was, if I was, uh, if we were still under the, the military regime without being picked up and locked up in the underground section of the G uh, GSS cell. So all, these are, these are, these are pecs that are coming uh, as a result of our, of our democratic uh, uh, experimentation. Because I still believe that we are still experimenting, we are still at the experimenting stage. It's 20 years, but we have not gotten it right. We are still tweaking and turning. I do not know when would all the pieces will fit into each other. But for now, basically, for now, we are still, uh, we, are, we have the digital puzzles that are not fitting. All right, um, but thank you for, for telling us that there is an underground session of this. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that, <laughs> that, 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 that. We didn't know that, before, but we just asked you those questions. <laughs> we have Polisha calling from Shomoli. Good morning, Polisha. Hello, good morning, Felicia. We lost that, so. All right, we also lost that call. I guess um, network issues. But um, Mustafa eventually sent his question um, by text message, and I just want to ask you, Barista Kolaole. He mm. says, um, now, if Abiola is bestowed the president, mm. what will happen to the vice president, Kingibe, who betrayed him and Nigerians? Mm. That's his question. Mm. Mm. And I'm coming from Alhaji, Mustafa mm. Razak. Please, um, That's okay. a very, very beautiful question. Unfortunately, Kingibe will also automatically uh, become the president, the vice president, uh, the vice president. because uh, that's he's, he's a running mate. Uh, he's a running mate, so it was a it's a joint ticket. You can't have a president without. Uh, All right, sorry the again. I'll put you on hold. We have a decoya calling from Bariga. Good morning, Adekoya. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Super John. Go ahead with the contribution. Hello. Hello. Go ahead. We can hear you. Hello. Hello, Adekoya. Hello? We can hear you. I can't hear you. Go Good ahead, morning. we can hear you. Good morning. What I just want to comment on, I want to say that the democracy we are practicing is having an adverse effect on the public. You see, we are running a, pro uh, a democracy where people don't have the freedom to, uh, to uh, express themselves as affected. The people are hungry. Minimum way are being are being told around as if it is something that is beyond um, the, the, the reach of people in the country. So you see the the the, 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 the break concerning their salary in the in the executive and the legislature is it, it, not being um, manipulated. But here people are manipulating the, the job. The little thing that they can give the public is being manipulated. So that is the contribution I have for you this morning. God bless you. All right. Thank you so much, Adekoya, for calling. Um, he, he is saying that, um, look, as much as you say we have the freedom of speech, we do not have the freedom of speech. He talks about issues of people in mm. Hungary and all well, that. Well, that's true. I mean, a, a, a new reminder is the shutting down of AIT uh, just a few weeks ago and all that. Mm. Under democracy, that is not permissible. You don't do that. If AIT has committed an infraction, for example, there are profit, I mean, there are due process that you can really take them okay. to, with um, which to punish uh, uh, the, We, we saw know? in the papers this morning that MPO is, you know, resolving that issue. But I don't want us to um, miss out on, you know, uh, mm. Razak's question. You were already uh, answering that question yes. where he asked what will happen to King Ibana because yeah, okay. he will betray uh, Nigerian. He will uh, automatically become uh, the vice president. You and I will remember that when MPO was being honored recently, he was also honored alongside uh, mm. uh, Abiola, yes. in which he was given the second most highest uh, national honor uh, in the land. And, but if Nigerian people uh, All right. if Nigerian people... Uh, I'm okay. sorry, we have to do this again. Samuel, a uh, uh, very young person called earlier. Um, good morning, Samuel. Good morning. Good morning. I just want to make a contribution of the Democracy Day. All right, go ahead. June 12th was the fiercest and first election in Nigeria. In the history of Nigeria, we any free or fair election, apart from June 12th. That's why we should celebrate the democracy there June 12th. Mm. Okay, thank you. 
Thank you very much, Samuel. <laughs> if people have heard that from you, yeah. um, it sound, I, I think you're a young person. Your voice sounds pretty young. That's a beautiful um, one from we were saying this is why you know history <laughs> should be taught in school. Exactly. Um, because exactly. you know our young ones need to know exactly. about need things. Know. We're not born then need to know mm. about this, and that's a very good one from from, exactly. from Samuel. Um, exactly. He says that's he, because it's a one of the fairest and fairest elections mm. we've had. If not the fairest and fairest election we have in this country, we've had in this country. That's why it should be celebrated. Thank you for your contribution. Um, let's also quickly take your t um, get your take on. Um, the, the, from, uh, the question from Mustafa on you know, what will happen to, to well, Kingsbury. Well, like, like, uh, like he has said, there's really nothing that can be done about it. Uh, the, the, the election, you have a running rate. So whoever is declared as the president would automatically, the running rate also gets equal treatment. Well, now, where the, pro where the issue can be is that in the minds of Nigerians, Nigerians will not forget mm. what he has done. Mm. Now, in, 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 the, in, the moral, in the moral courts, in the courts of morals, he still stands guilty. But on the face of it, he would be celebrated, he would also be honored as, uh, as a recipient of the, of, of, as the vice president, which was done, uh, the, he was given that, yeah. uh, that mm. award as, as a vice president of this country. So it's, it's, that's, there's no debate about that. Constitutionally, it would be recognized. But in the moral minds of Nigerians, in mm. the everyday Nigerians, for those that understand history, for those that know history, for those that remember what he has done, then posterity would not. All right, we have Osoro calling from Shemulu. Good morning, Osoro. Good morning. Yeah, I'd like to contribute to the democracy business. Go ahead, please. Yeah, yes. Yeah, sure, no. I'm, I'm, I'm quite alive and to you know that June 12 was the only election that was free and fair in this country. And if I may say, it is still going to be the best. This is June, but for now, it's still the only free and fair election here by a lot of Nigerians voted for MPA and Dola. So, we will like for the Lord from East, West, South. Um, coming to say, June 12, Abiola, so nothing Abiola has spoken to me. To me, it was a political thing. Just to speak in the heart of the questioner. Now, we have been to now. So many things are beginning to be unfolded. Demand from every area, okay, and it will keep going. Now, as you come to think of those who know their life from the east, west, north and south, who are not even a general family, you see, all I can say about this country, you know, and um, um, there is no, we compromise so much. In any government or in any leadership, when there is a compromisation, I am telling you, things can never go wrong. We compromise, this is my brother, it's from the north, it's from the east, it's from the west, this is rubbish. Compromisation brought us to where we are up to now. The day we have a leader that will not compromise, that will see his way, not as far as same person like himself, that then we start getting things right in this country. Now we are done with we know the beginning of everything, but do we know the end of it? Yes, do we not Let's think about that, because if you get to a point where people will start saying, enough is enough. Demand is for this, demand is for that. Not to have You don't like that, I'm not. All right. For people will start demanding for this. So thank you very much. All right, Bye. thank you so much, Sarah, for your contribution. Thank you very much for calling in. Um, as we begin to round off, um, mm. looking at the uh, legacies of remembering the legacy of Abiola, what what message should we, should we take from his struggle, and and the struggle of all those who lost their lives? So some of them are still very much alive, mm -hmm. and for those who are still alive, what message should we take? What lessons should we take in, in moving this country forward? Well, the message for me has to do with integrity. It has to do with uh, steadfastness, uh, and for those who betrayed, uh, like. Uh, <laughs> has been said that no, that we, when they sit back today, they will, uh, in their mind, their conscience, will be telling them that, ah, 
If I knew, I would have uh, stood my ground. I would have maintained my integrity. Mm. Uh, because uh, treachery, betrayal, and all that. Somehow, one way or the other, also have his own payday. Now we are celebrating MK Abiola today. And then a few people are uh, some a large number of people. I was talking about castigating people like uh, Baba Kana Kingipe for his uh, lack of integrity, for his lack of principle, for his refusal to stand by his principal, who was MK Abiola when he needed him uh, uh, the most. Uh, young people will be drawing a lot of lessons from this and then they will know that the best thing to do when you are confronted with the kind of circumstances in which Hello. Abiola finds All right, himself, um, it is better to be steadfast. All right, we have Ekanem calling from Akoka. Good morning. My name is from uh, Akoka. Uh, you know, you see, the, the, uh, the, uh, Abiola won the, the election and today they want to honor him that is analyzed to be as a democracy day. But what is the necessity for that if Abiola is not declared the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria? He is definitely going to be a decorative item in the sitting room. Just like one can, can have a particular item in the sitting room because already he has been given the seat in uh, the, the highest uh, position, you know, in president. And now, what is the derivable benefit of a president having given him this position, the DCON? So it definitely becomes a decorative item, which of course can only be seen without a derivable benefit from the struggle we had encountered before. All right, thank you so much for calling Ekanem. Uh, thank you for your contribution. I'm um, talking about, you know, decorating, uh, recognizing, uh, you know, of your life as, as posthumous president. Thank you very much for calling. Quickly, um, your, your final word, uh, meeting. What, what lessons should we take from those who struggle, not just MK Abiola, you know, all the, his wife lost, you know, also lost, you know, she, she was assassinated. And all those who lost their lives, those who were still alive, who fought for. Um, that struggle, that journey for democracy to be entrenched in this nation. What lessons should we learn in moving the, in the, this country forward? One of the lessons that I have personally learned that I think we all should learn from is the fact that we need to selflessly put the nation above selfish interest. See, uh, for those that lost their lives, it was not as if they didn't have better things to do. They could have actually cowered in their rooms and say, okay, fine. We're good. Whatever you guys want to do, you guys should do it. But they came out to fight for something that they believed in. They fought for a mandate that they believed in because they thought that that was the direction that the nation should go towards. So, and the people that are benefiting from it right now are, are, are doing worse than the, the military government. The beneficiaries of that struggle, the beneficiaries of those struggles are, are, are right here living large and not, they were not even partakers of the struggle. No, they were not. They are not and, and that's just the truth. They, they were not partakers of the struggle. So it, it is very sad. It is very, very sad that some people actually died. Some people, laid, some people were maimed for life. Some people lost limbs and means of livelihood for the struggle. And only very few are recognized and revered. Nations where we sing that the labors of our heroes past shall never be in vain. This is looking no, like it's in vain. All right, um, this should be our final call from Rashid. Rashid calling from Sri Lewis. Good morning. Yeah, good morning. Good morning. Yeah, I want to contribute for Democracy Day. Go ahead. Sorry, I want to talk. Today is not supposed to be Democracy Day. Because we are born of Abiola. Because he's the one that fought for this Nigeria that is celebrated today. And those people that are there, they are just fighting for their faith because they are saying someone that fought for them. So they're supposed to just know if we pray and pray for him. Democracy is supposed to be made 29 because that's our independence. But Nigeria nowadays, I'm just, in my own opinion, it's like they are just happy that they are with somebody that's not for them. 
So that's my own contribution. And those people that are there now, they are not because Abiola is already the legacy for them to follow. It. And they are not following the legacy. Because all of, of all of us, we are seeing so there are something that happened now in Nigeria. So God bless Nigeria. All right, thank you right. so much. Thank you so much, Rashid, for calling. Um, I'm afraid with that call, we do have to wrap it up on uh, Super Dome this morning. Many thanks to all, um, wrap it up on this segment, rather. Uh, many thanks to all our callers and to our guests who are legal practitioners. Thank you so much for the insightful conversation. Thanks for having um, us. We have two legal practitioners, Tunde uh, Kolawole and Samson Adigoyega Newton. Many thanks to the both of you. Thank you very much. All right, we will we'll take a break now from this conversation. And when we return, myself and Olamide, we'll be wrapping up on Super John. Stay with us. <laughs>